everyone, this is Lucretia. I'm here today showing you some basic supplies that I like to use for my rock painting projects that I do. This here that you have in front of you are a, just a basic old style turntable. It's great for spices you usually find on your table or whatever, but this is what I like to use for my rock painting. These are great because you can just move around and work on your surface without using your hands to pick it up and mess up all your painting. Uh, I also use it for my paint tray, which I'll show you here real quick. I keep all my paints on here and I can just rotate to the colors I want. Um, and it's handy. I also use old rags and stuff instead of napkins to clean my brushes off because they don't sift through so fast, you're not wasting them. And then when I'm done with them, I either toss them out if they have a bunch of paint on them because they're just an old towel that I cut up in pieces or I will wash and dry them and then just keep reusing them. I believe in recycling. So save you a bunch on napkins. That's great for that. Um, getting back to these, uh, this one cost uh, for a set of two, I think we paid like $10 at Fred Meyers. They're not that expensive and they're fantastic. Um, and the old style you can find at a secondhand store for like 50 cents, a dollar. They're not very expensive. These are the really old ones, which are bigger, but these had a little cushiony inside. They are handy. They grip. Um, another thing I like to use are old recyclable lids, the heavy duty ones um, that I like because they I'll take a lid that's about the size of my rock, a little bit smaller in width, and then I will set my rock on top of it. That way I can get up underneath my rock if I want instead of just paint the top surface. I can completely go around. Um, another thing I like to do with it is moving it to one side of my easel, of my turntable, and I can make it look like an easel. It's it, I can work on it from a side view instead of at a flat surface. That helps a lot. And you can just keep adding to it if you wanted to into the back and just keep raising your rock the more that you need and you can still spin it around and use it. Another thing is if you're going to be using it on a smaller rock I highly recommend that you don't use these like milk caps that you get from the milk jugs because they're so flimsy and they don't really have a lot of support and say you're working on it it's going to move on you. Uh, it could totally mess up your painting. So if I have like a smaller rock I don't know we'll just use this one I can add another little piece and have it where I'm still able to get underneath. But if you don't have one that's smaller than the rock you have, you still are having a flat surface. You just can't get underneath. So lids are handy. Um, another thing that I like to use is for paint wise, apple barrels nice. Oops, let's see if I can get that in there. Apple barrel acrylic paints are nice for a little variety if you want them simple. I like the small ones for traveling because I travel a lot while I'm painting. Um, but I do so much painting that I usually buy bigger than even this. This is a pretty good size one here. But I buy paints by the gallon. Another thing that people don't know are house paints are 100% acrylic. So I will often buy my whites and black and all my basic solid colors through house paints and I get the flat. I don't like to get the cheapest ones because those are usually pretty thin and liquidy. I like it a little thicker. But you're looking at, you know, a lot less than what you would be paying for one of these filling up. I probably can fill 20 to 30 of these at least in a gallon of paint. And that's a huge size difference. Uh, these run you about, I don't know, about $4, I think, for one of these, three, four dollars. And so that saves you a lot of money. By the time you buy, you know, four or five of these, you've already paid for a gallon of this. And this you can get a lot more. The only thing I use afterwards is I'll use like a clear gloss spray. If you're keeping it in the house, these are okay. Um, if I'm using outside, you want to make sure it's water resistant and sun resistant that'll protect your rock and also um, a resin is good so just making sure that you're doing it in a warm room would be good uh, as long as it's got ventilation or at least out in the sun when it's nice out when you're spraying 
they do dry really really quick on the sprays um, if you're using a resin I let it sit for a good 12 to 24 hours and they come out extremely shiny when you do that and uh, another thing is what else do I use I use little stencil brushes which are handy another thing you can do for stencil brushes if you don't have these take old paint brushes that have been worn out with lots of paint in them like this is an older brush and they start instead of being flat anymore they're starting to spread out i will purposely take one of these to a rag and just keep rubbing and rubbing the tops of it and it'll just flare it out more and more for you eventually it will look like this these are great for shading i love these little things this is my smaller one i have a bigger one and it's just from a brush that i've totally just flared out so keep your older brushes they work great for this sort of thing also i have these old brushes out for example to show a little difference because we'll go over a brush cleaning technique too um, if you're not cleaning out your brush well and you're just rinsing it in your rinse water which has paint in it after you've been using it you're still going to have paint in your brush which makes this expand down toward the bottom here which is what makes your brush fluff out so always after at least use some hot soapy water if you need to wash them out or some paint cleaner some paint thinner for your brushes um, that way when you're washing them too for me when I rinse them and I'm done with them I will often take my brush I dry it flat for the flat ones I press out all the excess water and I reshape my brushes that way I'm keeping them flat and in shape because you don't want to lose being able to you know line or whatever you want to do with your flat brush I often use them for the bigger surfaces um, another thing with the small round tipped brushes I also I dry them turning the brush at the same time I never go like this you're gonna ruin your tips and you're gonna spread it out and then after I'm done I put it between my two fingers and I twist the brush to reshape the form to a point another thing I often see people do with the rock classes and stuff I do is they'll put their brush in the water and they leave it sitting with the tip down you never want to do that there's a couple of reasons on the tip these are glued so if you're soaking it in the water you're just loosening up your glue and these often pop off with the cheaper styles here another thing is too is that you're putting pressure on your tips and they'll eventually stay curled you never want to leave them out always set them on a flat surface so that they can dry just always careful of your tip when they're drying so that they don't dry into a curve just leaving them flat on a surface or I'll leave it on the edge of a surface just like that and I'll let my paintbrushes dry that way another thing is that I use are these little dots for dots little doctors I call them doctors but it sounds like daughter anyway so I use these little daughters and I also found this from a friend that she was using and these work great and they're a punch set and they have a variety of sizes so they're pointy at one end but they're flat on the other and these work great for doing the mandela circles and everything that you want to do on your rock i mean you've got clear down to peewee size here so you can do a huge variety of them and they last forever they're metal so those work great and I think I spent like eight bucks at a hardware store for those um, I also keep sandpaper handy and I will be teaching you how I fill my rocks to make a smooth surface and it makes it easier to paint on not to mention that it looks a lot better on a smooth rock than a bumpy rock so we will go through that process in another video another thing I'm not really a paint pen user but I have friends who do use paint pens um, craft smarts okay Posca's are okay the only thing I recommend that you probably shouldn't use and I have learned is I have a rock garden outside anybody who uses a sharpie these fade out in the Sun so I don't recommend a sharpie they look great if you're gonna keep them in the house but eventually they use they lose that shade and they'll go to a super light color where you can almost not see the words or anything anymore so I don't really highly recommend Sharpies um, paint pens I haven't really seen too much of a difference they do seem to keep their color so far that I've noticed in my rock garden um, 
I have a few people who have done some rocks there and they've used paint pens and I don't see any difference. So paint pens aren't too bad. I just don't like using them myself personally. For me, I get a finer tip when it comes to my paint brushes with fine lines than I do with these paint pens. The only other thing I don't like about paint pens is, is I can't shade with them and I like to shade a lot in my rocks and we will be also doing some videos on rocks uh, techniques. I like to add layers and layers. Often people will ask me, you know, what do you use for, you know, the color of, say, a guitar or there's multiple colors I use, like five different colors that I'll use to make that dimension that I like. And another thing that we'll go over is a lot of people use a lot of paint all at once. Layer by layer, thin layers, it dries quicker you don't get globby spots. It doesn't scratch. It's kind of like putting on nail polish. You don't want to put a big old glob on. You want to do a couple coats if you need to make it thin, smooth, and clean. And that's what we'll be learning here, especially when it comes to painting that, you know, it takes multiple layers. The more layers you have, the more dimension you will build. And it's fun. And I hope to see you guys pretty soon. Other things, by the way, before I forget, is you can also use like toothbrushes, use rags. Um, there's so many things and stuff that you can use for texturing. Rags, bundled up, uh, keep pencils handy. I do hand draw my designs. Another thing I do say, if you're gonna use pencil, light hand, never a heavy hand. And that usually means by drawing really dark on your, your rocks because some paints will not cover that no matter how much you dry. So making sure it's clean after you're done and erasing most of your lines and just keeping it super light. I like to use white erasers. They don't leave any color or anything on the rock. So handy dandy reminder there. Another thing too is I prime all my rocks white with a flat white paint. This is also house paint on all my rocks. Very good and solid. You're not leaving any lines. I can draw on it and see what I'm drawing. This one's pretty much ready to go to paint. Uh, I do do both sides. So when I do my base coats and stuff, that makes the bright colors be very bright. Unless you want to paint it black. But just remember, as dark as a rock is, the darker that you have it, the more paint you're going to have to use just to get that bright color that you're wanting. Dark darkens it up. So I will hope to see you on the next ones. We will go over spackling a rock. I will see you then. Have a good one, guys.